Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Broken Pact. Yay! This, yeah, right? Yay! <laughs> We're back! Here we are. The, um, Mythic Odysseys of Theros special for Gen Con at Home 2020. Um, and I'm your Dungeon Master, or should I say, your omen speaker, Ruben oh. Brustler. Oh, that's that's what you're going with for this time. All right, like it, do like it. Let's see. These fine chosen of the gods are my players. Feel free to introduce yourselves. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Pridgen, and I play Astarok, the uh, the Minotaur fighter, sort of of the Boros Guild, now also of uh, of the oh god, what what were they called? Eighth Legion. The Eighth Legion. <laughs> yes. So I, I've I've got some demon contracts going on there, and and formed a little bit of the Boros in uh, Hell. But now we're who knows where. I mean, we do know where, but like <laughs> we don't know. Right. <laughs> And obviously, hey, but, uh, my my horns are a little less uh, connected to me than they normally are. <laughs> yeah, I just noticed that. I, I, <laughs> I like it's like oh okay, they figured out the horns. Okay, the effort is appreciated. Yeah, I, I don't have the discipline that you have to keep your head still for as long as you are to make that work. Yeah. Hey everybody, I am Riley Silverman, and I play Velma Sweet. Uh, she is a uh, a bard slash warlock who was affiliated with the Demir Guild on Ravnica. Uh, who knows who she's affiliated with now, and she is also very glad to be out of Avernus and having avoided any new and deserving new contracts while on the plane. Uh, I want to say this this is this is very, very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not petty, but like uh, stickler for details kind of thing. But Jordan, you don't have a demon contract. You have a devil contract. And on Avernus, that's a very big difference. Ooh. You're right. When you're right, you're right. <laughs> In Theros, there is no difference. Yeah. Demons, right. devils, everything is something of the underworld. <laughs> but in Avernus, you better get that detail. Makes a big difference. That would be considered yeah. very offensive. Yeah. Yeah. And that's like that's like circles. saying you're a jet when you're clearly a shark. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of contracts, I think this is a perfect time to introduce myself. I am Gaurav Gulati, and I play Lucian Ladrian, a representative of the Azorius Senate uh, from Ravnica. And in Avernus, he tried to bring some of the uh, laws and rules that he loves very much to that land, but it is a lost cause, very much so. But he did meet someone that also specializes in contracts and made a deal of sorts to uh, find this uh, person of interest. And we'll see how that goes in uh, Theros. But that's me. Hello, everyone. I'm Ashlyn Rose, and I play a Luxodon cleric uh, from the Selesnia Conclave. <laughs> and it's been so long, but her name is Tuturu. Tuturu! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, she's had quite an interesting time in Avernus as well. She, uh, last I checked, she was like, she went on this little mini adventure with the, what was the little creature's name again? Lulu. 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 Yes, she went on a little adventure, mm -hmm. um, kind of went MIA for a little bit, and then found this really cool spell that the group was able to use. We didn't do it quite well enough, so <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but yeah. Right. We're probably back in Ravnica now, right? Oh, like, that's that the, the dream. Goal, that's so. what we're going for. We made it. Here we are. You're out of the frying pan. Mm -hmm. Literally, mm. yeah. Quite so. Yes. <laughs> I don't know what the bad news is. And into the... the we'll find out. Into whatever the, whatever. Greeks Who knows? put their frying well, pans on. I do want to thank you all for tuning in to twitch.tv slash saving throw show. This is an independent tabletop gaming channel. Uh, and we depend on your generosity and the mysterious strangers and believers in chat um, for, for helping us through uh, in the best of times, much less in our current uh, environment. Um, and to become a believer and subscriber, all you have to do is click that button uh, that says uh, that you want to become a subscriber here on the channel, or you can gift a sub. Um, and when you do, you give a reroll to someone uh, and we have a couple of believers already. Amusing Cat has given one has given one to the table. B Yay. Zelda yes. has given one to the table. Yes. All right. I resubscribe today, and I'm taking mine. So that's fair. I, I think I I think that makes sense, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and traditionally, I give it to whoever's DMing the game, so I'll keep it myself. Uh, in addition, you can also give omens which are the equivalent of toasts, where we will read a message and toast and an omen to your, uh, your donation. 
There are also divinations where our players can see a little bit further into the future and make a reroll on any one of their dice. So if you are feeling uh, kind uh, and feeling generous and feeling like you might want to help the Broken Pack on their journey today, please, please, please do donate uh, and the links will be over there in the doobly-doo. Um, that's, that's the technical term. That is the technical <laughs> term. Yeah, um, very much. And uh, I think that that's what we got so far. So with that, oh, I've missed you all so much. I <laughs> am gonna say, welcome to the Broken Pact. Season three and a half, episode <laughs> 33 overall, God's Willing. When last we saw our heroes, they were in Avernus, the first circle of hell. After trials, tribulations, travel, and tribute, they traversed their way across the hellscape to El Terrell, a city that was dragged into hell. They, with the help of their compatriot, Lulu the Hollyphant, and a slew of other misfits, arrived at El Terrell, convinced the fallen angel Zariel to retake up her sword and fight for good once more. They escaped out of the sun-scorched deserts of Avernus through a magical tree connected to Yggdrasil, the world tree, which they too are intertwined with thanks to the power vested in them with the World Pact, a magical, mystical force governed by the Morrow, world-protecting dryads of immense power, one of whom, they once upon a time, returned to life, Tuturu's mentor, Muki. They said tearful goodbyes to Lulu, left Avernus behind, and stepped into the tree. And that is where we left off and where we will pick up. You emerge, as you so often do, from a tree. You walk out of the tree onto a marble floor as I change my background. Let's see here, virtual background. Trust oh. me, it's it's gonna be a marble floor. It's gonna be great. It's a marble <laughs> floor, here we go. You've never Love seen it. such a marble floor. You've never seen <laughs> marble floor, beautiful and shiny. There's a roof above your head and instead of walls, you're flanked on all sides by stone pillars. The tree looming large behind you is in fact two trees. Or is it one tree? You're not quite sure. There's sort of an optical illusion happening of some kind. But what is not an illusion it is what is beyond the tree. There is nothing. Spanning to the left and to the right is the grandest waterfall you have ever seen, and it expands forever and it drops to unseeable depths. The sky beyond is starry and purple, and the stars seem to dance and flicker and move on occasion. They seem to be alive. There's a nice breeze, the first one that you've felt in a very long time. In front of you, there's a woman with long black hair. Her arms are folded in front of her as if waiting and another pair of arms, diaphanous, half there and half not, wave lazily at her sides. Welcome, friends. I've been expecting you. Tsutsuru, is this, this isn't like some Mount Selesnya thing happening, is it? Mm -mm, no, 
it's definitely not something went wrong. Uh, I mean, is there a chance that we're just like dead? And this is some sort of dead go place? I mean, I think we just left the dead go place. Yeah. That's a really good point. Yeah. Doesn't I'm just saying, like maybe this is the good place if that was the bad place, right? Oh. Possibly? I, I guess that's a possibility. Um, I've never seen so much water in my entire life, especially what looks to be like clean water and not being filtered or run through any sort of pure fake purification system or anything. Um, it, hello, we are... Uh, wait, it, I assume you know who we are if you were expecting us, and how is that to be... Yes, I apologize for our rudeness. We should have said hello to you oh, first. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, we, no. we had to have our, have our own little <laughs> internal discussion first. I think everybody understands that. Of course, it's quite all right. I have nowhere else to be right now. My name is Kaideli. I am the prophet here at the temple at World's End. Excuse me? None of those sound familiar to us, or at least to me. Ah, right. You are world travelers yes yeah i guess you I could guess, say that yeah that's a strange thought but yes well we've traveled, traveled both within and between worlds so yeah so it works well you have traveled to a new world this is theros okay yeah. well, what, what's what's your deal are you like a big demon place or uh, we got a lot of guilds things like that you guys oh. have a deal, or do, do you have a lot of loud, dirty machines that are constantly at fighting wars with each other? Oh, all right, yeah. no, no, I'm sure they can't just souls of people. No, they can't just condense down their location into one or two words. That's I don't think that's how this works. Unless I they, understand unless... that you are tired and confused and new here. Allow me to summarize. Theros is a world or three worlds bound together by belief. The belief in platonic ideals become manifest and govern Theros. I am a prophet of the god of mysteries and horizons named Krufix. This temple is their holiest place, the oldest of the gods and the most mysterious. I have answers if you have questions. Be yeah. careful which questions you ask, of course. I'm sure you know. My deal, Astaroth, is to know things. You told. I don't think you told her your name. Yeah, no, I, I admit that was a good one. <laughs> that was a pretty good move. Um, now, I'm I'm not saying I don't like no, but just to be entirely clear, what what exactly are Platonic ideals? Incorporeal <sighs> descriptors, ideals, law, good. Okay evil, okay. chaos. It's, it sounds like she's describing sort of like the guilds, but like as a system of belief as opposed to just a system of membership. Well, All right, then, okay. Then who's in charge of these uh, ideals? Who, who, who manages them? Who, who's Pretty at sure the top? She, I think she just said gods. There is a like, pantheon of gods that exist. But they less govern and more manifest as support wanes and waxes. The power of the gods ebb and flow. And all in accordance with fate and the willing of the gods. 
All right. However, Sounds pretty neat. However, as someone whose business, shall we say, is to know things, I know where voyages begin, where voyages end, and where things happen in between. For most people. But I can't see where yours goes, which is why I'm here to help you on your journey. I think I know where you wish to go and I can help you get there. You wish to go home, yes? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we have business back there and it was under some siege when we were last, under some trouble when we were last there and we'd like to find out what's happening and- Yeah, it'd be nice to know for sure if it's still there. If it, yeah. We honestly don't even know how long we've been away. It's time was a little bit funny in our last place. Yes. The manner in which you have traversed is unique. Well, not exactly unique, but very rare. I do not know your full path. I simply knew that you would be here and that I would know nothing else about your future. I know some of your present, some of your past. Sparing details. That is unusual to say the least as a chosen of Krufix. But I can help you get home as you have emerged from this tree. I am aware of a way to get you to a tree that can bring you to where you wish to go. I sense a but coming here. Hmm. There is no but. There is no terms. However, I don't know your path. If you wish to stay, you may stay. So where's that tree at? Well, it is far from here. If you were to travel by conventional means, fortunately, your coming was prophesied a long time ago, and the god of horizons has arranged passage for you. Is that like, an, is it airship or something, or? Or something. Sorry, Astra. Uh, oh, oh boy. Yeah. You know what? I'm just gonna like uh, curl up in a little ball and uh, we go through the air. You guys tell me that we're wherever we are and, and when we gotta get out, we can get out and I can make it. I was an angel once. I flew for a little, I could have flown. It would have been- That's right. I, I, I'll just pretend. Oh, Astron, man. you helped us to ascend to Elturel on the back of a, of, a, of, a, of a chain and the flying, some sort of flying device. I don't remember exactly what happened. It's been so long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we were flying. I mean, I sure, feel like- yeah, we all remember it very clearly because it happened like moments ago <laughs> yeah. for all of us, yes. right? <laughs> but you were very brave and you succeeded. And also you helped escape from that, that hornet's nest that was way up in the sky. I think that if anyone has overcome his, his fear of heights and has shown himself to be brave, it's you. Yep, yep, gonna be great. Not gonna be a problem. And yep, I'm yep. giving you bardic inspiration so that if you have like a, a role for uh, constitution, <laughs> then you can use that for that. Nice. <laughs> yes, I'll take it. <laughs> I don't have my fans with me, so let's just say that she did her fans and was like being very calming while she did Oh that. man, I Excellent. imagine it. It's like fans all over the place. Yeah. Please, you look haggard and tired. If you wish, we have fruits and wine Ooh. and food and sustenance and rest. Oh, that sounds wonderful. We'll, I... I think we'll happily oblige. Yeah. Uh, Kaideli will motion to a set of cushions um, and uh, in the middle, there are baskets of grapes and oranges and apples. There are pitchers of cold water with condensation forming on the outsides. Um, silk um, banners flow in the breeze. It is a comfortable place. Oh, I'm so happy to see fresh fruits and vegetables. I head straight for them. You have journeyed far and deserve rest. 
I gotta say, compared to that first place we jumped into with the with the vampire guy, and and then the place we just came from, where everything was like hell and terrible all the time, this ain't too bad a place to spend some time. Yes, other worlds are chaotic. Ours is no different, but this place, this place is watched over and is safe. Uh, Ruben, is there any sort of like water receptacle, like like an like like a something that has water in it, like a like a some sort of like sink, like like a, like a hand ba- washing a ba- station, like a, like, yeah. like a basin? Yes. Okay, so, so Velma is, is very much. There's a stone. Velma is. <laughs> Um, okay. that, has a, that has a basin in it, and there's a large metal pitcher of water next to that. Okay. So Velma is very much not trusting beautiful things immediately as like, oh, <laughs> things are all great now. However, she immediately starts pouring fresh water. Like, she, like, dunks her head in it and, like, is, like, running water through her hair because yeah. she's been in a dusty wasteland for who knows how long, and she's just like, I I can be clean, finally. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and as you rinsing. pour, you pour this pitcher over yourself, um, and you would expect it to be empty at some point, but it does not empty. It simply continues to pour fresh water over you. And not just fresh water, but rejuvenating water that cleans the dust as it rejuvenates oh. your soul and gives you the effects of a long rest. Oh, thank you. Actually, more than a long rest. It resets your hit dice as well. You are Ooh. fully recovered. Yeah, oh, nice. Right. I think, I think Lucy's going to join you and just wash his face <laughs> yeah. and hair at least. I don't you care if this is some sort that- of... <laughs> Sorry? Tricky hell. I, d- I don't care if this is some sort of tricky hell. I Fresh water is enough to sell my soul right now if I, <laughs> if I had one to sell. Don't let the wrong person hear that. I already sold mine. Fair. Oh. Um, yeah, these, these fruits look pretty good as well. Oh and, my gosh, Astrolog, you have to try this one. And as you try these delicious golden apples and fresh bananas, and delicious grapes and wine, you too uh, get those effects of a complete recovery. Oh, man. <sighs> the scars and dirt on your faces and on your hands wash away as if a distant memory. <sighs> it is good to see heroes such as yourself rejuvenated. I would wish someday, perhaps, for you to solve the ills of our world as well. And one of you, of course, to return home here. But you have other plans, I assume. Wait. And so I will grant you a boon. One question each to help on your travels. Two the tree, the Nix's Bloom Shrine at the center of Setessa on the mainland. I, 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 lean, I lean into the pact and I just go, did she just, did she just say that one of us is from here? I think so. I think I mean, so. That, she must be mistaken. I mean, we're all from Ravnica, that's pretty clear. We spent our lives there and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we've also been hopping around other planes for like a while now. I feel like it's not that out of the ordinary, one of us to possibly have a... I guess so. Not I don't me. know. We'll deal with it when the time comes. Right yeah, now, we, we are. To get to this tree. Well, what about these questions? Well, yeah, what do we want to ask? Uh, well, we need to ensure our safe travel and maybe it seems like she already has a vessel for us to travel in, so... Indeed. A vessel has been prepared for you outside. It will take you through the realm of Nyx over many distance distances to where you need to go. At the grove, I can deliver you to the tree, but you will need to test yourself against the strength of Setessa in order to leave. 
can I ask a question that's not my question? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> was that your question? No, 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 no. question? Oh, no. Busted. Yeah. no. Um, well, I, get, I mean, should I ask who Satessa is? Like, it sounds like kind of important. Yeah, that's, I, that's I, a good I, question. Who, it's, who? Oh. No, go, go ahead. Who is Satessa? I mean, that can be my question if it's pretty big. Yeah, I mean, if it's legit oh. enough, then like, yeah, sure. I mean, you it, call but... the shots. <laughs> <laughs> but if she's it's just like a, a janitor or something, that feels like maybe just like a casual question. So Tessa is not a person or a god. So Tessa is a place and a people. <clears throat> we so have Tessa to defeat is them? one of, I'm sorry? You said we have to defeat them? You must prove yourself against the strength of Satessa in order to have access to the Nix's bloom. The Nix's bloom is a tree that meets the requirements of your powers. Hmm. You will travel there as I have seen fit. And you, Tuturu, will meet an old friend in time Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm not quite sure what you mean, but we'll see. Sometimes the answers aren't obvious. Hmm. All right. I've, I've got a question for you. Hmm. Look, I, I've done enough of, the, enough of these go find the tree things to know that it's never going to be just, you know, a walk through the the park or whatever so who's going to be opposing us in this who doesn't want us to get to the nyx bloom astarok you have stars in your eyes and so you of all of the people here might recognize this place in some way since your mother is from here. What? You will have to face the Tree Shaker, a massive being of the forest, which will prove to the god of the hunt that you are worthy of passage into the Nix's Bloom Grove. Wait, wait. You're telling me my, my mother is from another world other than Ravnica? That is a second question. <sighs> did you rules. did you know your mother, Astrak? <clears throat> I mean, not really. I was mostly raised by my grandmother. <sighs> my mother died. Uh, Long time ago, as far as I know. Wait, I mean, I thought my father was dead too, but I mean, we met that chump, right? <laughs> was your grandmother your father's mother or your mother's mother? Uh, well, you know, in our culture, it's kind of loose association sort of thing. I You're see. sort of raised by whoever. She didn't talk about it much. I, I see. I, I certainly understand that. Okay, I, I think I have my question for you. Go on. Are, are those who depended on me in Ravnica, are they okay? You left Ravnica at a time of great strife and war. It was <clears throat> a dangerous and fraught occasion. Those strays that you watched over, many were hurt, some passed, many survived, but war takes its toll on everyone. Your patron knows this. 
you do your best with what you can. And the war is over. Thank, thank you. War is over. All right, well, that's something. Either way. I wish I could ask who won the war, but I guess that's another question. Yeah, things oh, kind of a not, bitch that way, ain't it? <laughs> I would not be returning you to another hellscape. Well, that's good. I suppose it's some good fortune that we know the war is over one way or the other. Now we don't have to rush back. We also don't need to keep running from it. Indeed. Right. It is time for you to go home. Right. Lucian, I think out of all of us, if anyone has a question to ask, I think it's you. Um, I think Lucian takes a moment to just kind of take in, the, uh, take in uh, what she is telling us, and then he says, I would request to reserve my question until a later time. I do not have all the information I require at this point, and I think you have answered most of our uh, imminent requests, so I, if you would let me, would like to reserve it. Interesting. How do you plan to ask it later? I'll find you. I believe you will. Have you had your fill? <sighs> yes, I suppose we did pig out a little bit. <laughs> Well, I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm I'm full now, but uh, if you don't mind, Astrot grabs a couple of the the <clears> like fruits and stuff and sort of puts some into his uh, robe, and he takes one of the apples and just pops it on the tip of his horn. It's like yeah. I'll keep that for cool. later. Oh yeah, Astrot. Velma absolutely is like downing some wine and like pocketing some berries. And <laughs> Astrot mind. avoids the wine, but everything <laughs> else he's he, into. Keep in mind that the mystical, magical effects are of this place and not of these things. All right, but like, are they still gonna like taste good? It will still be a delicious apple. That's all I need to know. Would you mind if we take a few for our travels then? By all means. Thank you, you've the been gods, incredibly kind. The gods provide. Well, here's for the gods then. <laughs> yeah, hey, the gods, them, but... the gods have been informed that heroes of which the horizon cannot predict are passing through, and they will part a gap in order for you to travel. All right. Sure. Well, hey, should we get on our way? Please. I think we should. And she will uh, lead you out of the temple at the world's edge. Um. Kaideli walks with uh, measured and patient steps, but casual. Um, her hands are still clasped in front of her, uh, but her ghostly ones sort of dance in the silk banners and the swaying shrubs, and she runs those ghostly fingers through the branches as she passes them. As you exit the roofed portion of the temple, you can see above you an incredible display. There are some stars that do indeed appear to be alive as I change my background. Ooh. You nice. can see starry herds of bison that lazily graze across clouds. There's a celestial swan that sings a sad song as it swoops and swoons like a shooting star. And while all of that might be enough, the single most shocking and impressive sight lies directly in front of you, just past the horizon in front of a skiff at the water's edge. It's as if the night sky came together in a massive shroud, and that shroud wraps an unfathomably gigantic being, a gaunt figure with a huge staff that bends at the top. The figure's face is 
obscured by the shadow of the cloak of stars, but a gray bony hand, skinned and barely holding on to life, clasps the staff as the other stretches an impossible distance from the horizon directly to the boat, which rests in the figure's hand in the sea. Oh no. I think, I think that food might have been laced with something. Oh. Whoa. Did, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Yeah, no, I, I think we're all seeing hand. it. Very hard to miss. There is nothing to fear. This is the god of passage. They will grant you passage to where you need to go. We've had bad luck with boatmen before, so be sure give <laughs> Have our... you? It seems to me you've had good luck with boatmen. One of them took us to hell, so we're a little bit skittish. I hope you apologize for the To be fair, taken. hell did sort of turn out pretty well for us overall. I mean, I felt pretty good about it. I, I almost died, so I'm a little less on board with it, but I understand your feelings. Oh, fair almost, enough, yeah. Almost dying is not dying. A trip through hell is better than no trip at all. You were removed from a place that would have killed you at a time that would certainly have taken you all. And so destiny and fate decided that this is where you would end up. All right, so different plane, different boat, different boat man. So. Let's trust our host and board. I wish you safe passage, and I will see you again. And she will turn, and her ghostly hand, one of her ghostly hand waves, friendly, as the other hands remain clasped in front, and she returns to the temple. What's her name again? Kaideli, K-Y-D-E-L-E. Thank you. It's a commander card. Ah, I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. All your pictures, by the way, are reminding me that I'm still waiting on my Pharaoh stargazing. Oh. <laughs> Again. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, there is a boat. Looks like a normal boat. Looks like a normal skiff. Maybe 10 feet wide, 30 feet long. Um... It has a mast, it has a rudder, it has a steering wheel. Looks like a serviceable 20-footer, 30-footer. All right. Well, let's get aboard, I guess. Boats are a little better than airships, in my opinion, so, uh, hey, this, this could be starting off a lot worse. Doesn't I... seem to be operated by soul coins, so that's a plus. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Coin. Oh, boy. Oh, you had to say it. <laughs> and a, a giant finger raises up. As you approach the boat, it's like a weird trick of light or something where as you approach, instead of the figure getting larger, it like shrinks down to your size. And Neat. this figure is probably six foot six, gaunt, and the staff is eight feet long and tall and curves at the top. And it extends a hand and says, payment. Oh, um, do well, we have any soul coins left? Do you? I don't I don't remember. So. Yeah, I think we <laughs> used them all. I okay. think we used them. I'd be uh, curious what would happen to a soul coin when it leaves Avernus as well. Sure. Uh, bring the soul you, it would be too. I'm... <laughs> I'm the one who spoke up, and so I will be the one to sacrifice. And I take my Demir Guild Signet, and I give it to him. And it you put it in the hand, and it sort of falls into the hand and disappears. And the figure motions for you to board the boat. I step onto the boat. The hand stays out. 
Oh, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> I, no, that was for all of us, I think, is yeah, what we're, she... We're... One each. Oh. Uh... Well, uh, I ain't got any coins, but <laughs> I'll take the apple that I took from uh -huh. earlier and hand that to him. Not... It, okay, so the <laughs> apple stays on the hand. Not a coin. Ugh, uh, damn it. Right. Uh, I guess... Uh, uh, well, I, I still have some Ravnican currency. I, I guess, I suppose we can try that. If uh, Here, I will pull out three gold pieces if that the equivalent of Ravnican yeah. money. The Xenos? Zips, right? Zenos, yes. Zips and Zenos. <clears throat> Zips and Zenos. So you pull out three Zenos. Uh, I'll hand one to Astarok, one to, uh, uh, to Tuturu, and then put one in the hand. Thanks, Blue. The coin drops into the hand, and he motions for you to get on board. All right. And if you two do the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, I should have used a smaller uh, a currency. Can, can I have that back? This doesn't change. Or... No, it's all right. Actually, it's fine. Uh, I'll... Exact change. Ah. <laughs> And as you walk onto the boat, the boatman <clears throat> um, looks as if it's stepping onto the boat from your angle and then continues walking and remains the same size in your eyes, but becomes part of the horizon and immeasurably massive again. And a giant bony hand goes under the boat and well, this uh, isn't how boats work in Ravnica. In the ship, doesn't feel like it moves. Rather, the world moves underneath you. The sails don't billow. The wind doesn't howl. But you, you are know, moving. But this ain't too bad. And not, and not moving at all. There's no motion sickness at all in this. If the world moved around us and we were in, shit, in airships, I, I wouldn't be a problem. <clears throat> you journey through the stars on your ship as the ocean gives way to the sky. Clouds become waves. You see dolphins playing in the wake, but they are Nyx-born dolphins. They are starry and purple. Neat. And they ride alongside the side of the ship. Hey. For a little while. I've never actually seen dolphins in the wild. Is that how they always look? Yes, actually, except less sparkly. It's the only uh, dolphins I know about are usually like fused with, you know, lizards or, or people or things like that. Right, cynic experiments. That's what I'm used to as well. The dolphins at some point peel away from the ship and you feel a bump, bump, bump in the side of the ship. Go ahead and make a perception check. Gonna roll. Drew, uh, you can make an animal handling check. If Ooh, I do prefer. <laughs> Let's see. Plus seven, night, you math. 21. <laughs> Wait. Did you get a 14? 19. Oh. <laughs> Good, because I got a solid six. I got a dirty 20. Oh, I got, I got, a, I got a nine, so not great. As As we're rolling, uh, it, it, here's a reminder to please uh, give us some omens, uh, some divination, <laughs> our toasts and rerolls. Uh, and if you want to become a believer or a subscriber, uh, you can do that as well to help believer our in the cult of Tuturu. friends along. <laughs> the cult of Tuturu. <laughs> What's well, called? I got a dirty 20 on perception and a 21 on animal handling. Uh, 19. 19. So um, you see the dolphins peel away and they all sort of peel away in the same manner. They sort of abruptly turn and no longer are skipping and jumping, but running or, or swimming as quickly as they can hmm. uh, in a perpendicular direction as the bumping 
starts. Thelma, the bumping feels a little rhythmic, feels almost um, like testing. Um, I don't think you'd ever been on safari before. No, I don't think there's not a whole lot of safaris on Ravnica. Okay. Uh, yeah. This is sort of no, like, no. Yeah. this is sort of, feels like test jabs at the side of a boat. Okay. Hmm. Not a fan of whatever's happening there. I, I rolled a really bad perception, so I'm just like, ooh, look at those dolphins go away. Yeah. Future's going to kind of look over if there is an over. Sure. Now you can make a perception check yourself. Woo, what is my perception? Okay. Natural 20, 24. Wow. Hell yeah. I am very perceptive. Excellent. Well, you perceive where the bumping feels like it's coming from, and it does feel like it's coming from the same section of the ship. And you look over the <laughs> starboard side, and you look down, and you see a collection of, you see stars when you look below you. There's no ocean. There's no bottom. Oh. But the stars do feel like in some places they have gathered into shapes. And it looks like there are shapes ramming into the side of the boat. With your natural 20, you can definitely see that these shapes are uh human sized there's three of them okay they appear to be floating through space and ramming with horns that come out of their heads into the side of the boat and turning and as you look you can hear little chuckles um friendly but mischievous okay uh, there, there's something ramming the boat. I, I don't know what it is. I kind of like turn to the boat. Is the boat person on the boat with us? Nope. Boat person's carrying you. They're off in the horizon. Oh. Ramming okay. the boat. Yeah. They, I, they look like clumps of stars. Hello. You what, what hello are you? Yes, yes. I'm like, hello. There are people on here. That is very rude. They look. <laughs> They look up at you and they chuckle a little bit. And uh, it appears as if they are playing. Well, I'm glad they think they're playing. <laughs> yes, she's right. They, we did pay a, a decent fare to ride this boat. So please uh, do, oh, I sound like my father. This is so weird. Uh, <laughs> kind of do, I'm getting flashbacks. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, They keep bumping into the side of the boat. One of them, it looks like, as Tuturu is talking to it, it comes up to you. Ooh. And is like face to face with you and is looking at you. And so- I am, oh, oh. Yep, go ahead. I would say I'm gonna do something that I don't usually do because I do so much of my, my bard magic with fan dancing, but I think I'm gonna pull out my flute and oh. just start playing my flute a little bit in a pleasant way of trying to like, maybe like make pleasant music that might make them a little happier than just attacking us randomly. Okay. I like that. Uh, go ahead and make a performance check for me. Okay. That is a 21. Excellent. <clears throat> These three beings, medium in size, maybe four and a half feet tall, swim, up and onto the, onto the front of the ship. And they sit cross-legged in front of you as you play. And they sort of clap a little bit and watch you. They are humanoid. They have um, human bodies, two, two males, one female, it looks like, by their clothing. They have horns. The males have long mutton chops. And all three of them have the lower half of a goat. They have goat legs and hooves at the bottom. Mm. 
These guys got horns. Hey, I, I like I like these people's look. Maybe you are from here. Whatever yeah, you're I mean, doing, don't stop. And I, yeah, I keep playing. And one of the uh, um, one of the of these Nick's born satyrs pulls out a set of pan pipes and looks around at the four of you. Uh, Velma, go ahead and make an insight check. Okay. Ah, no, it's only an eight. Okay. I don't know a lot about the facial tics of uh, Nick's born satyrs, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> um, this satyr um, take, picks up the pan pipes and starts to play along with your song. And I need everyone to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh no. Oh, okay. Uh, Velma, you go ahead and do it at advantage because you're playing along with them. Oh, thank you all. Oh, thank God for that. 18, baby. Also 18. Uh, you said wisdom? 19. 17. <laughs> thank goodness for the advantage. And Lucian? I got an 18. Okay. Uh, no one is, is charmed by the enthralling performance of the satyr. Um, and it seems uh, as if they are a little frustrated by that. Um, the other two appear to be still enthralled by Velma's performance. Um, but this satyr then stands up and looks at Velma and says, but doesn't say anything, looks at Velma and points at the flute and points at the panpipes and points at the ground. Like it wants us to lower our flutes? I... 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 I okay, I, I stopped playing and I like motion like I'm going to lower my flute to the ground if, it, if it's going to as well. Um, it will put its panpipes down and it will motion to the other satyrs and they begin chatting with each other in a language that who here speaks Sylvan? I might. Where do we see that? No, a tie. No, a tie. At the bottom left of your DD Beyond sheet. Uh, oh, do I hit like a feats and trades? No, no, no. At the f far bottom left, it's like a proficiency in language. It's underneath oh, saving oh, throws. Yes. Yeah. I speak Sylvan. Okay. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> and you can hear them because you can hear a lot. Um, and they are sort of discussing this wasn't. This wasn't the plan. Why are why are we not attacking the, the one that had the panpipes? Why are we not why are we not having some fun? Why aren't we causing mischief? Why aren't we, you know, why aren't we doing stuff? And the other two, was like, it was so beautiful though. The music was so beautiful and they seem so nice. I mean, it seems like that they just want they don't want to play with us. So I lean over to Velma. They really like your music. I think you should keep playing it. I, I do, and so I, keep, I continue to play. Okay. Um, and it seems like they, the, the two are going to, are attempting to convince, come on, just calm down, it'll be okay. We're, we, you know, we wanted to have some fun. This is fun, it's a different kind of fun, but it's fun, right? And That works. And so you are able to quell these Nyxborn satyrs. And they hang out for a little bit while you do your performance. And as they do their performance, Siamanth Pernkoth wants to send a omen to the group. Ooh. Yay! Nice. Hey. Gray as a mouse, big as a house, nose like a snake, I make the earth shake as I trample through the grass. Trees crack as I pass. With horns in my mouth, I walk in the south, flapping big ears beyond count of years. And you know me too. My name's Tuturu. Ah, Tuturu. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Cheers. Thank nice. you. Cheers. That was, that was great. wonderful. That was pretty great. And the satyrs. 
sated, will watch for a little while as you travel amongst the stars, and they will move on. It was strange. Hey. Hi. Thanks I mean, for let's, hanging let's, out. Let's not look a, you know, a gift in the mouth or whatever the Ravnican equivalent of that phrase is. Why would I look anything in the mouth? Well, all I'm saying is that uh, we, we come to a place and the first people we run into don't immediately attack us. That's like, that's doing pretty well for the moment, right? Like, that seems true. great. I don't know about you guys, but I like it here. I feel, I feel good about that. You continue your journey through the stars. <clears throat> Scenes of epic proportions are playing out all around you. Constellations in the shape of shepherds lead shiny fleeced sheep over a mountain of clouds. Two well-muscled beings made of star stuff tussle and wrestle for sport. Occasional visions of huge faces appear, as large as the being providing you passage. There's a bronze bearded man, well-shouldered and strong, a beautiful woman with hair made of vines. There's an angry minotaur huffing and snorting storm clouds and thunder in the distance. Hey, look at that. <laughs> they look on curiously, but do not intervene with the shrouded one. Eventually the clouds and the oceans turn into land and then into treetops. The skiff that you ride floats up a river. It's peaceful and serene. You come to a point where two mountains on your left open to show a forest. There are guideposts and guards, human and elven and centaur that patrol this mountain pass, but none seem to see the massive spectral hand that's carrying you and your cadre. A few moments later, your boat is set down in front of a beautiful, ancient, moss-covered tree with sparkling orbs in its branches that provide calm light beneath the canopy. There's a small creek that trickles around it and past your ship's keel. And you find yourself now not being held by any giant being on a boat in a creek in the middle of the woods. Wow. Well, that was one hell of a journey for sure. Suppose we get off here. <laughs> yeah. Would seem so. Man, I gotta say, if the rest of this place is like that, I like it here. Yes, it's certainly better than vampires and literal hell. Uh, it's good and to know that there are other planes that aren't terrible. I'm personally I mean, a fan of getting out of a fight with a song instead of a second fight. Look, I, I could go for like a vendor with some coffee and dough circles. Place looks a little like barren in that sense, but hey, I wouldn't mind spending a couple of months here every few years or so. Who knows? Have like At a least summer these trees. Home. Yeah. Is there like a path that we're that looks like we should be following it, or are we still in the water? You're still in the boat at this point. Okay. Um, and you're in a creek. It looks like there is a little path next to the creek. Um, go ahead and make a nature check. That's right. Oh, so close. I got a 10. <laughs> 19. I was going to say, I bet True True's nature check will make all of ours seem a little better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a little better than my five. Oh. <laughs> I mean, again, I don't think I've ever been in nature before. It's yeah. been so 13. long since I've seen like trees in my surrounding that I'm just like honed in on it now. I'm just like, trees. <laughs> For most of you, it is a little overwhelming to see not only the oddness of a 30-foot-long boat carefully placed in a shallow creek. Um, and so just taking in that surrounding around you is a little, a little overwhelming. Tutor, with your 19, you can tell that the tree itself that has these glowing orbs in it um, appears to be planted directly in the middle of that path 
that I described. Okay. And not so much planted as sort of sitting there, just placed. Um, it doesn't look like it's been, it looks like the path was there before the tree. Okay. It, but that's the only way to go from here? Yeah. Huh. Well, the tree hasn't been here very long, so maybe we're supposed to interact with it? All right. Well, as the de facto leader of people that can communicate with trees, I'll <laughs> leave it up to you. Okay. Uh, she'll go ahead and start stepping out of the boat. Okay. Is the boat person still here? Nope. Boat, per boat person's gone. Oh, she wanted to say bye and thank you. Um, <laughs> I, I've got to go helmetless for a bit. It's too, it's un too uncomfortable. Quite all right. You've still got your horns. <laughs> yes. That's all yes. Yeah. <laughs> I look like a satyr now, don't I? You kind of do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, yeah, I guess I'll walk up to the tree. Okay. Yeah. I think we're all getting out of the boat, too, as well. We'll just stand a little further away from her as she <laughs> works. Yeah, so two of you is going to walk right up to the tree, and the other three of you are going to stay a little bit far back? Mm -hmm. Not like, let me like 10 feet, just like okay. letting her be the, the sure. our uh, tree yeah. speaker. What She's our yeah. Lorax. She exactly. What would you like to do? She's yeah. our Lorax. <laughs> Um, are the orbs like floating or like or orbiting? No, they're kind of floating. Orbiting. They're sort of orbiting. They're kind yeah. of swaying. Like stuff. They, there's no breeze, but it looks like they're sort of moving just a little bit as they hang. All right. So she'll kind of. <clears throat> Hello, tree. And as you do that, uh, a massive pair of eyes in the tree open. <gasps> Whoa! Oh, okay, it has eyes. And oh, great. the orbs sparkle like the stars that you saw, not in the sky, but now in front of you. And it goes, mm -hmm. <sighs> oh, hi, who are you? Uh, hi, I'm sorry to wake you. I'm, I'm Tuturu. Oh, I'm waiting for you. You have? Who, who are yeah. you, may I ask? My name is Narangamaro. Narangamaro. Maro, Maro, you're a Maro. Yes. I am the Nyxborn Ancient of the Nessian Woods. Protector of the Golden Grove. It's very nice to meet you. Is there... Why were you expecting me? Do you need help? I was informed of your arrival by the gods. Um, it's, it's a rare privilege to meet ones of the world pact, which is not a thing I see a lot. Welcome. Thank the you. The gods have... Uh, have uh, let me know to, to wait here until you showed up, and then I am to take you where you need to go. All right. All right. Can you all hear this, or should I? I'll turn yeah, they around. Can all hear this. We can. Okay. It's, it's speaking in an English yeah. or a, a Ravnican. A common. <laughs> yeah, it's common. an MMRO. Uh, don't worry. You're fine. Come on over. Hi. What's, what's your names? It waves a branch. Hello. I, I'm Lucian. Uh, Ladrine from the Azorius Senate of Ravnica. I have no idea what any of that is. Okay, uh, it's a name. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm Astuak of the Boros Legion. I've got a letter here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Velma. Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Narangamaro. Narangamaro. Astuak, it might not be good form to hand a piece of paper to a tree. Oh. But, but yeah, no, sorry, it's fine. completely I've thoughtless. <laughs> uh, so you're you're here to help us travel to the next part? Yes. You are uh, trying to get to the tree. Well, that's a bit uh, hazy, I guess. <laughs> you're trying to get to the shrine of the Nix's Bloom. Yes. Right? Yeah. yeah, okay. 
I can take right. you there or show you where you need to. So what you'll need to do when you get there is you're going to face off in a test of strength against a champion of the gods of the, the god of the hunt uh, champion. All right, yeah. Uh, okay. Being that will just test your metal and prove to the god Nylea that you're worthy of passage into the, you know, the thing, the place. The okay. thing, the place. Yeah, the, the grove yeah. with the tree in it that you want to the, get to. The, you, you get it, Blue. It's the thing. The, <laughs> the, the, the place we got to go. I mean, Bloom. I'm sorry, are you an actual official representative of whatever's happening here? Because it seems yeah. you're taking this very loosely and not seriously. No, I'm super serious about this. <laughs> well, I've been here. Tip for, tip fair, that did sound sarcastic. So it is a little bit hard to I read. Apologize for my tone. I'm, it doesn't come through great, maybe. But I woke, trust I woke me, him up. I mean, I am a little groggy still, but I've been waiting for you. I was told by the gods to wait here for you, champions. Oh, also, I almost forgot. Um, the gods have seen fit to bestow upon you a small token in preparation of your trial. And as a reminder, of your time in Theros. So you're supposed to choose one of the words that best describes a wish that you would like to receive from the pantheon of the gods. Oh, sweet. Um, okay. The list uh, is somewhere. <laughs> Hold on. Cool. Somewhere around here. Do we have to find that list? I mean, <laughs> yeah, that I, I, I don't. I don't what remember, is happening right now? I don't remember where I put it. Can you? That boatman might have put us in the wrong place. Can you come back? The next born ancient Ooh. like looks under a branch, and like lifts a root to check <laughs> under it. Yeah, I just need to just hold on a second. I'm gonna. If you want to help me look for it, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. No, just, let's let's uh, look around, right? This might be a weird question, but can trees smoke things? I mean, are you asking me? I was asking the, my friends, but I can ask oh, you as well. I was just okay. sorry. Sure. No, you're fine. <laughs> it's cool. Talk nice. about yourselves. I'm going to look for the list, though. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. Where, where where would you keep it? What? Do you have pockets? Are there, are there like, Do you knocks move? or... I've no, got it's not knocks. on paper, is it? Because... I was told that's a, a faux pas. I don't think it's paper. Well, it's good to know that incompetence also spans multiple planes. It's great. Lucian. Hey, uh, Blue. He, losing paperwork. Tomorrow. Losing he, paperwork is a pet peeve of mine, and I will not let it go. I am sorry. I don't. I don't <laughs> think it's paper. Work. Uh, it, it's you, like I don't know. It's something else. You don't know. Help okay, me look for it. Or right. not, or don't. Again, again, again. Is there is there somewhere on your, I I want to say person, but that's not really accurate. But like, is there like a knock or like a, a nook that you store information in? I can I reach don't somewhere. I mean, and he like checks his pockets. I don't. I and he like there's like a hole, and he pulls out a chipmunk. And he's like, nope, that's not. Aww. I'm saving these for later. This is. D does the chipmunk know where the list is? I don't think so. I mean, Asterok will just kind of make a lap around the tree, just kind of like looking at the ground. Cool. Make a perception check. All right. Eight. Cool. Um, doesn't look, you don't see anything that looks like a list around. I mean, it's a beautiful little forest that you're in. Um, and this tree is massive and ancient and gorgeous. I mean, this thing is eons old and it shines brightly. The shadow in its bark is purple and star-like. I tap a permanent for mana. Do I notice any difference? <laughs> yeah, you get three times as much mana. <laughs> but, but but you don't see uh you don't see anything that looks like a list. All right. Well I I can locate this object if you describe it a little more at all. Sure. Describe it. Um, hmm. 
Well, it's a list. Um, on, on on a piece of bark, on a leaf, on no, a. It's not on a piece of. It's not on a piece of bark. I think it's on like a stone. A stone. This is a yeah. good start. Okay. A stone. All right. Okay, stone. we can find a stone. It's a stone. It's a, it's a step up from the from flesh. Can, that's what we thought. Well, can know. I cast a uh, locate object with just sure. that very bare minimum? Yeah. Of stone. What does would locate possibly object do? Can you read it for me? Yes. Uh, describe or name an object that's familiar to you. Yada yada yada. The important part here is you can locate objects, specific object known to you, as long as you have seen it up close. Alternative spell can locate the nearest object of a particular kind. So that's what I'm looking for is a stone with writing on it, if that is cool. what this is. And it just does it? Uh, it as long as it's within a, a thousand feet sure. of me, and it can't uh, go beyond the thickness of lead. Uh, lead is, I guess, the only really thing. It can't go past that. Uh, it doesn't say anything about going through wood? Uh, spell can't locate an object if any thickness of lead, even a thin sheet. Okay. So not wood. Cool. Wood ain't gonna um, do it. <laughs> there is a list on a slab of stone, like a tablet, uh, beneath the boat. Uh, okay, so I'll cast that spell and get a ping from behind us and just kind of turn around and head for the boat. Is it like under the boat or like on the bottom of the boat? Like Under the boat. Uh, Astarok? Can, yeah, uh, Boo, I'm looking to, for this list. Yeah, I, I think I found it. Uh, Tutaru, can, can I get a hand here? I need some muscle. Oh yeah, sure. Oh yeah. Uh, if you could just kindly tip the boat over, I believe it's at the bottom of the boat somehow. It might have been left by our boatman. Well, okay. let's give Ready? it a push. Yep. Three, two, one. Strength checks. <laughs> Whoever's, whoever, uh, so um, you two can make strength checks. Uh, Lucien, what are you doing? Uh, I'm sort of just waiting for it to, to flip over and then I'll grab it off the top when it like gets the in position. Uh, I think Velma knows her, her skill set and is is fanning herself as she watches them do this. Cool. <laughs> uh, so Tuturu and uh, Astarok make strength checks. Lucian, I'll tell you what you got to do when it becomes apparent. Okay. I got a 21. Hot damn. I got Tuturu? What? I got an eight. Eight. Okay. They shove the boat and it lifts up onto its keel because it was like leaning on one side, right? Sure. And it lifts up. And as the boat lifts in the creek, you can see a fine, um, well written and well carved tablet um, with some amount of writing on it beneath the three to six inches of water Ugh. um and uh it is under the boat now Astarok and tuturu you cannot push the boat over you're currently holding the boat up yep why do i feel like i'm doing all the work here tuturu come on <laughs> i'm trying Lucian. my best <laughs> Lucian, what would you like to do uh, at this point, I will also call Velma over. Velma, I think I could use you as well for, for this. Sure. What can we uh, do? To, uh, I'll point the list. Like I, I believe that's it. I just need to retrieve it. And four hands is better than two. Sure. So I, I reach down and I try to help pull it out with Lucian. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know how deep the water is with like hold somebody to do like a human chain sort of thing. Sure. Go ahead and um, whoever's re it looks like it's probably going to weigh about. 10, 15 pounds. Okay. Okay. Um, do so uh, whoever is reaching for the slab, go ahead and make a dexterity check. Okay. Whoever Mr. is- Why don't you go ahead and do that since this is kind of your mission this time around, so. Yeah. And you can make that an okay. advantage. Okay. Because you're being aided by Velma, who's making sure you don't fall into the creek. Right. Um, yeah, make that roll. Okay, dex at advantage, here we go. Uh, four for the first one, or five, not a great. Ah, there we go. Uh, uh, dirty 20 for the, for the second Cool. One. Nice. Ooh. You have a hold of it. Got it, got it? And I'll, um, I'll pull. Astarok and Tutoru, I need another strength check. Oh no. Ooh, drop the boat on me. <laughs> yeah, whatever, strength's my whole thing. Come on, 
two two natural ones. Eleven. I'm getting stronger. <laughs> Twenty-four. Okay. Oh. That's going to be enough to hold it up. As Lucian is able to sneak this slab out yeah. and twists and twirls um, into Velma's arms like a dance partner. Catch me! <laughs> um, and it's a it's a lovely dip moment. No, I'm kidding. Um, and you are able to escape before the ship falls down on back. <sighs> Excellent. I could have held that ship up longer. I just decided not to, you know? I, have sh I could not. You were so much stronger. I need to... When you when you do your push-up things, let me know, and I'm going to... I got to work out. Right, Narangamaro okay. is facing away from you and appears to be digging in some roots. It says, uh, it's it's got to be... It's around here somewhere. I... I, I believe I've found it. No, don't, no worries. I think this is it. And the, so then the tree stands straight up and the face just appears on the other side of the tree. And it's, and those eyes open and it goes, oh, hey, that's it. Yes, nice. It seems you may have dropped it into this creek. Yeah. Uh, but here it is. Yes. Thank you. Uh, and I'll bring it over. And I mean, I assume we can read it too, unless it's a different language. Can any of you read Celestial? Oh, Doubt nope. 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 I mean, I was an angel for a very short amount of time. Uh, Hope you make an intelligence check at disadvantage. <laughs> is there any chance that Infernal and Celestia are like primordial or like different, they're different oh. dialects of the same language? Okay. Oh. Well, I rolled a four in my first roll and since it was a disadvantage, I rolled a second roll and rolled a two, so. <laughs> this looks like angel words. Oh, good. <laughs> angel words. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> yeah, it's the language of the gods. Here, let me, I can do that. Let me get the thing. Yeah. And a giant branched hand, like, puts, it's like a postage stamp in your hand, is what it looks like. Or like a Coke can in Andre the Giant's hand, if you've ever seen that photo. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, wow. And he, and, and Naranga looks at the list and says, oh, okay, good. Okay. Here's, are you ready? Here are the words. Just write this down. I'll write this down, yes. Yeah. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to choose one of these 15 words okay. that best describes a gift that you wish to receive. Okay? All right. The choices are tranquility. Lame. Understanding. Right, okay. Inevitability. Faithfulness, challenge, sustenance, unpredictability, fate, mystery, power, pursuit, transformation, obfuscation, creation, or patience. Do you, do you need those? You good? Do you you, need you those? should probably well, get those one more time. You want, Can you, someone who's a faster writer just toss those in chat? Because like I'm using my iPads, it's very hard to like type and go as we go. It's not many things. Yeah, I can just hey, paste the list. I picked cool, mine already. You. Oh yeah, that'll be great. I paste that I'll put list. the list in. Oh, this is. Do we one. each get to pick one? Everyone gets to pick one. Uh, ignore Thank ignore you. the gods' names. Just pick the words. <laughs> ah, I know the gods. Okay. Oh, there's so many good words here. Uh, look, I mean, part of me thinks that it would be easy to go for power, but I mean, power is not really my thing. I think uh, it's more fun if you earn it. So I'll go with challenge. Oh, good choice. Challenge is the domain of the god of victory, Iroas. Iroas, I like the sound of that. When you step to the challenge, you are a favored of the god of victory. <laughs> you right. will be given the gift of being a devotee, the equivalent. I mean, you don't gotta pray to them. I'm just- Okay, you know, good. <laughs> I, I don't have a lot of time for prayer. Whatever, it's fine. Here, I'll just, let me, can I tap you? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Cool. And he taps you, and a little uh, emblem in Nick's born stars appears on your armor, or 
wherever he taps you, of a helm with four stylized horns, the symbol hey. of Iroas. And it fades, once it's emblazoned on there, it then fades and soaks into the armor. You uh, get the benefit of Iroas's devotee at Piety 3. Nice. Scene, which is on page 50 of the Mythic Odysseys of Theros. Um, which means that as a devotee of Iroas, you've earned his favor through victories won in his name. You can cast compelled duel with this trait a number of times equal to your charisma modifier, minimum of one. Okay, minimum of one then. <laughs> you regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest and charisma is your spell casting ability for the spell. Oh boy. <laughs> so you can cast compelled duel. I'm not very charismatic, but I'll take it. Hopefully you can rise to the challenge. Yeah, I'll make it work. Does anybody, you, you three have any ideas? You have any thoughts? Uh, I think if anything, through our journeys together, I, I believe if there's any word that could describe where things have gone and what all things, re all things reveal themselves in time. So I think patience is Pati a great word. Interesting. Patience and the development of slow changes is the domain of the god of the sea, Thassa. Hmm. Thassa oversees the ebb and flow, erosion and growth, and change the slow cycles of the season. Can I, can I tap you? Uh, sure. And I'll tap. <laughs> Tap, tap, tap on the on one of the tusks and the image of three stylized waves in that dark Nyxborn starry uh, um, image uh, appear on the tusk and then fade into the tusk, like being Ooh. soaked in like a sponge. You are to be gifted the equivalent of Thassa's devotion. As a devotee of Thassa, you've proves, proven yourself a worthy representative of the god of the sea. You can cast Fog Cloud with this trait. Ooh. Fog Ooh. Cloud this way smells strongly of the sea. You can cast this spell a number of times equal to your intelligence modifier, minimum of one. You regain all those spell uses when you finish a long rest, and intelligence is your spell casting ability for the spell. I'm so glad because that is one of my weaker stats. Well, I I suppose that if if anything has mocked what I've come to represent or come to uphold in my time with my friends here, it's it's that people are tied to a destiny, and my patron compels me to find those who have been pulled from the destiny and who have been lost along the way and, and try to bring them back to their proper paths. So I guess I'll select fate as mine. Ah, Clothis, the god of destiny. An excellent choice for one who seeks paths and their inevitable ends. Can I can I tap you? Go for the tap. Go for it. Okay, I'll, I'm gonna I'll tap you <laughs> yeah, I'm, and I'm taps you up. on the forehead, and a stylized dagger that has a wisp of hair underneath it, the symbol of Clothis, appears on your forehead, and then fades into your skin. Oh. Um, as a devotee of Clothis, you can manipulate the bonds of destiny and invisibly entangle every living thing. You can cast command wow. with this trait Ooh. a number of times nice. to your wisdom modifier, <sighs> minimum of once. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Wisdom is your spell casting ability for this spell. Nice. It is. Uh, I, uh, lots of these words speak to me and I don't know which one 
Uh, you all would choose for me, but I think my faithfulness to this group and my guild and to the law itself uh, speaks for itself. So faithfulness is my word. Ah, an excellent choice for a leader and one who leads by example. The god of the sun, Heliod. The, the faithfulness and reliance and knowledge that every day the sun will rise is the domain of Heliod. Can I, can I tap you? Uh, uh, yes, I suppose so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll just go boop and he'll okay. boop you on the nose. And uh, on your nose as sort of like a tattoo. No, 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 no. Not really a tattoo, <laughs> calm down. A, uh, a crown dead. Would never let you live of it down. laurels, a laurel crown appears. Okay sort of like like they would be the bridge of a of a set of glasses. Oh, okay. Okay. That's kind of cool. And they fade into your skin and disappear. Man, imagine what Lucian's dad would say if he got a face tattoo. Do not <laughs> ever speak of this to my father or mother. Do not. As a devotee of Heliod, you've proven yourself a worthy champion of the sun god. You can call on Heliod's favor and cast bless with this trait. Nice requiring no material components. Heliod's blessing manifests as a nimbus around the affected creatures, causing them to shed dim light in a five foot radius until the spell ends. You can cast this a number of times equal to your wisdom modifier minimum of once. You regain all expended uses when you finish a long rest. Wisdom is your spell casting ability for the spell. Yes, wisdom. <laughs> Excellent choices all. You feel good? You feel good about that? Yeah, no, I think it worked pretty well. Excellent, uh, great. Sure. Cool, 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 cool. So, um, yeah. You, I, you, I actually correctly picked my color scheme, so. You did. <laughs> do you, uh, yeah, I mean, you want to go to the thing? Or do you want to, like, I, I yes. guess? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's Please. up to you. You know, I'm not in a rush. Yes, we we are in a rush, so please. Okay, I'll show you. Just um, follow me. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask, but why, why is everyone being so nice? I mean, I, I've I've come to learn to question these things from time to time, and right now it feels no, overwhelmingly. Sure. Yeah, giving. no, you're good. Um, <laughs> I mean, I was told by a prophet of the horizons to expect you. From what I gather, heroes are to be helped. People who can help anybody are supposed to be, you know, helped on their journey. Not everybody is a commander of their own destiny. Not everyone can shape the world, much less multiple worlds, right? So, you know, um, I was told that this is a good thing to help with and also um you know i'm i'm like i feel a bond like a connection okay oh, you know i feel like we're you know two peas in a pod yes yes absolutely you know? i would like a you different knew, pod you knew what tomorrow <laughs> was right yes yeah do you who do you know mookie mookie yeah Hi, mookie. Wait, wait, we, we also sounds, met the- uh, Sounds uh, familiar. Remember the fungus lady we met down in the sewers? <sighs> I can never remember her name, but she is so lovely. She was, she was uh, tomorrow too, That right? was Marika. Marika. Yeah, Marika. Yeah, I know Marika too. Yeah, we all sort of know each other, sort of. <laughs> I mean, we don't talk much, but they're always there. Absolutely, it's that connection that no matter how far apart you are, it feels like someone's always with you. And that's what you have in you as well. All of you, you all have the seed of the world tree in you. You all have that blessing. And that is the blessing that allows you to leave this plane as well. Okay, well, I mean, I've never had a reason not to trust tomorrow, so I appreciate you uh, explaining that to me, thank you. Yeah, cool. And again for your hospitality. Of course, you're welcome 
any time in my woods. But yeah, come on, let's go uh, fight a thing. And he will lead you uh, to uh, the grove. <clears throat> and the as he leads you to the grove, I will uh, ask once again for divinations and omens <laughs> if you have any. Um, it looks like you all still have two rerolls, which uh, which we're, which we're going to use. Okay, so uh, you get to a place called the Golden Grove, and in the Golden Grove there is a large tree in the center um, that looks like it is supposed to be uh, what your avenue out of here is going to be. Um, and standing next to the tree is this thing. Ah! A I don't think that creature loaded correctly. A three-headed beast. One oh. head of a lion one, that sort of has a man's face. One uh. head of an antelope and one head of a wolf. And it stands uh, vigil at the in the grove. Uh, and uh, Naranga says, well, good luck. And <laughs> stands back. Let's roll for initiative. Oh. Cool. Barf. I have to remember how to do combat. Yep. D20 plus your uh, dexterity or any other bonuses you have. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's right. I have a minus one to my end. <laughs> <laughs> it, it'll be on your sheet if, it's on, if you don't have it. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. No, I got a six. Okay. I got a 19. 16. Ooh, good one. Daru, 16. Okay. Uh, and then 19 for Velma. Yep. Did we lose Astarok? And Astarok? Oh, yeah, we mm. lost him. He's we gone. Lost Astarok. He no! fell down and died. Well, we're going to hold Astarok's turn uh, <laughs> until he's able to come back. Velma, you're up first. All right. Um, Question for you: Do they seem threatening? Like they are, like they're coming to attack us, or are they? What's the they situation? look like? They are prepared for uh, combat. Okay, because like I know that like we rolled initiative, but that's out of character. I know that in character, I don't know that. Um, I think I'm going to ready an attack, which is uh, I'm going to have my Eldritch blasts ready to go, so that if they start coming towards, like, like if they move in a threatening way to us. I'm going to unleash both of those. Cool. Uh, Tuturu. Yep. It's your turn. Okay, yes. Um, big creature thing. Oh, yeah, I will. I have spells, and I use those spells to help my friends. So I will... And what are we doing with Astrak right now? He's just going last? Yeah. Uh, I, sure. I mean, Astrak's holding. Oh, holding. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and hashtag bless everyone. Hashtag bless. Uh, at level one. Nice. Which means that Velma and up to three creatures of your choice, me and Lucian, sorry, Astrox, Um, whenever <laughs> you make an attack roll or a saving throw, you can add 1d4. I think Excellent. that Astrox will be okay with the extra three, yeah, without so the too. extra three on his attack roll. <laughs> Um, my assumption is that Astarok is going to swing his axe, but I don't know how much damage he does. He does like to do that. So. I can tell you, I have a, I, can, I have access to his sheet. Sure. We'll um, see if we I'm, get to I'm going to say he's going to go last. Okay. Um, and, which means that next it is Tree Shaker's turn. Tree Shaker uh, is going to make three attacks: oh, one cool. with its claws, one with one of its heads and one with its tail. Okay, so if my Elder's Blast go off before it does that, if it's starting to look like it's going to attack when I get yeah. to fire those, okay. Sure, so go ahead okay. and do your Eldritch Blasts. Okay. All right, so this plus eight, so plus three, all right. Is it plus a D4, you said? Yeah, for blessed? blessed, yeah. Yeah, I just forgot what level she cast that, level one, okay. All right, so uh, that is, uh, I'm going right for the middle head. Uh, so that is going to be, that is 16 plus, that's going to be a, a seven, uh, 18 to hit. That'll hit. Okay. 
And then I get to do at this level, I think it's, yeah, 2D, 2D tens. Cool. OK. Uh, one is going to do eight damage. The other one's going to do 12 damage. Force so 20 damage. total? Yeah, 20 cool. force damage. Excellent. And it takes it right to its snout, and the lion in the middle roars angrily. But as it roars, it doesn't sound exactly like a lion. It doesn't sound exactly like anything at all. It sounds like there's a bit of lion roar mixed with like gravel and tree branches cracking, and it's very strange. It continues its turn and runs towards you. Um, the head is going to attack Velma. Yeah, it seems fair. That's a two on the dice. That's that's oh. that's way below my AC. Yep. Nine to hit. <laughs> uh, I'll go ahead and get the claws at you too, then. Okay. Ooh. Yeah. The claws. Uh, I'm scared of the claw. Nineteen to hit. That does hit, and I don't I... appreciate it. <laughs> the claws will deal you. 17 slashing damage. Whoa, all right. Hello, welcome back to D&D. &D. All right. <laughs> and then the tail is going to whip out behind and go after, uh, let's go with Lucian. Okay. That's yeah, a real shame that our tank just vanished from chat right before yeah. the combat began. Um, 18 to hit. Yeah, that get me. Ooh, max damage. 16. Ooh. 16 bludgeoning with the tail. Yowza. Uh, and that was the tree shaker's turn. All right. Who's next? Lucian. Oh, it's me. Uh, I assume this thing is not humanoid in creature type. Correct. Cool. Just uh, checking. Does this look like a... <laughs> uh, they have a human face is what you said. So they have like a, one, one of their faces is vaguely oh. human-like. Can I, I do a whole person it. on just their face? No. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will uh, cast. Uh, let's do spirit guardians. Let's get that. Let's get spirit guardians going. Okay. So I call forth spirits to protect me now. In Ravnica, these were uh, spectral owls that represented my guild. Uh, I don't know if they change in essence in in uh, Theros, but that's up to you. Uh, so I will cast that, and they flit around me to a distance of fifteen feet. Now this thing just did attack me, so I assume it yes. is already in the spell range of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, and I, I designate my friends not to be affected. Uh, creature speed is halved in this area. And when it enters uh, its turn for the first time or starts its turn there, it will take some damage. So Cool. Nice. Um, so yeah, so uh, these the spirit guardians do not change as they did in Avernus. Okay. Necessarily. Cool. You can choose to change them if you wish. Otherwise, they can remain owls. I will choose owls for sure. Great. Spectral owls. The owls Ooh, nice. circle and harry the uh, the tree shaker. Excellent. Um, it would be Asterox's turn now. Uh, do you want me to go for it? If you have it, I would. that would be great. Yeah, I, I can pull up his sheet. Let's see. Uh, okay. Let's see what Asterox has. Uh, Asterox chooses to drop his weapon and do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> See how you like that, Jordan. Uh, <laughs> hold on a second. Let's see. Here he is. All right. View character sheet. Uh, so I guess he he attacks twice usually. So I'm going to do that. Yep. He has a great axe. Great axe, which is plus nine to hit. Holy cow, Astrock. Yeah. He's cool. Uh, okay. Uh, I will just roll my d20 for that. It's, it's a little rude to call a minotaur holy cow, just so you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, brother. Reference. He's my friend. It's okay. We do this. <laughs> uh, so that is a six plus nine, so 14? 14. 14 misses. Damn. Wait, no, it's 15. 15 hits. Okay, cool. I Sorry, I did the math wrong, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six plus nine is 15, and that cool. hits. Cool. Great. Uh, okay, let's see what the damage on this bad boy is. 1d12 plus 6. Hot diggity dog. 1d12. Hit it with your stick. Are you using the axe? This is the... Oh, wait, doesn't he have a thing that hurts trees more? Oh, this isn't a tree. Not a tree. tree I thought tree we were fighting that tree that was very... And it, it actually can't attack trees. It can't actually trees. can't attack yeah. trees. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. Uh, this is... So this did 2 plus 6, which is 8 damage. Great. And I'll roll the second one now. 
Uh, this is also hit seven plus nine, so sixteen. Uh, so and that's six, a six plus six, twelve damage. Sixteen total. Uh, to hit, yeah. Oh, and sixteen then, to hit, yes. And, and then hit. twelve damage after that. So, so you hit for what were the two numbers? Uh, eight and then twelve. So twenty more. Yes. Cool. 20. Good turn, Asterok. Hi. He did a lot Sorry, of damage. I, my my internet is down, so I, I'm just I'm calling in on my phone. So oh, no wow. background or horns, but uh, but I'm here. Nice. nice, nice. Well, you are in. Unfortunately, you're in Tuturu's spot in the. Oh nope, we're getting it fixed. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So uh, what you missed was that the tree shaker um came and did get did a tail attack, a claw attack, and a head attack. Uh, Velma unleashed some Eldritch Blasts. Lucian made some Spectral Owls. Um, and Tutru uh, hashtag blessed everybody. And then Lucian went over to Astarok and used his hands to attack this thing twice. Right. Yes. Yep. Which you and did. Then, like it works. And then you went and dealt some damage. Okay, this thing has taken 22. 40. I don't know if that matters at this point. What's up? My initiative was 22. I don't know if that matters. <laughs> well, we'll say that you held your action. <laughs> Yep. And now it's your turn again. Okay. Hot damn. So Astarok, seeing all this stuff going, and it got distracted for a moment, you know? Like, there's a lot of stuff going on. It's just going to be like, well, looks like this guy's got too, too many heads. Let's see if I can solve that problem for him. And he's just going to run forward with his, uh, with his uh, axe bane yep. axe and uh, give it a whack. Great. Actually, give it two whacks. Two I whacks. can't look at my character sheet right now, but I can do two attacks. Mm. First one's a natural one. Okay. I don't think that one hits. That one's not going right, to hit. Sorry. It's been a while since I fought. It's OK. Did it two hours ago. Oh, boy. Uh, this one's a 25, though. Ooh, that, that'll hit. hit. Yeah. All right, and then I'm pretty sure my damage is D10 plus six. I think that it was D12. Yeah. I, it does it, seem like it was D12. Yeah, that's yes. what it says on your sheet. I got it over here. Great, thank you for pulling that up. You got it, buddy. All right. Good. Oh boy, I rolled a 12. Hell yeah, max wow. damage. So 18? All right, so that's 18 damage. Wow. <laughs> Take this thing with lots of heads. Yeah. Keepers. Cool, cool, cool. It takes that hit and it looks like it's uh it's it's doing okay. It's it's gets hurt by that. <laughs> I'll take it. That was the that was the plan. Right. Velma. All right. Uh I am going to uh kind of like position myself a little bit more behind Asterox so that I'm not like necessarily in the path of attack as, as easily, but uh I'm still gonna go ahead and fire off two more. Actually, you know what? Let's have fun with it. It's a live show. Uh, I'm going to cast Dissonant Whispers at level three. Okay, what does that do? Uh, so it needs to make a uh, sa wisdom saving throw. It rolls a 22. Okay, so it does save, so it does not run away immediately. Uh, oh. But I am going to roll four. Oh, actually, I have advantage. Hold on. I mean, you passed. I don't 22. Know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I'm going to roll 4d6, and now it's going to take half this psychic damage. Um, okay, so hold on. Actually, no, before sorry, you do that, before, wait, yeah. before you do that, uh -huh. this Chimera, this Baron Chimera, has an ability called Spell Turning. Okay. Oh. The Chimera okay. has advantage on saving throws against any spell that targets only the Chimera, not an area. If the it's Chimera's area. saving throw is this, successful... This is an area, I think. No, it's not. It's not. Sorry. Yeah, it's an area. Dissonant Whispers is an area? Um, no, no, sorry. Only one creature. Sorry, I, I was reading the 60 feet range, but that's, that's not the area. Gotcha. Sorry. If the Chimera's saving throw is successful and the spell is a fourth level or lower, uh -huh. the spell has no effect on the Chimera and instead targets the caster. Uh, oh, I might just kill myself. All right, let's find out. Go ahead roll and roll a save. <laughs> roll a save. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, gee. <laughs> cool. Don't forget your blast with this. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's good to know. I, I'm, yeah. I'm back to normal, by the way. So. Um, yeah, I sure did not save on that because I rolled 10 <laughs> with the bless. 
Okay. Uh, against my own 15? I might oh, have just killed myself. No! no. Go ahead and... Uh, what about your devotion? Oh, roll no, your like damage. Yeah. Look, if anyone was going to kill Velma, in the end, it was going to be Velma. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see here. So that's 11 plus... So that's, that's, that's 15. That is... That is 19, so 20 damage. So I'm still up, but I am looking bad. Great. <laughs> and wow. because I, I don't know how this works when you cast Hellish Rebuke on yourself, but technically I am now frightened of myself and have to move as far away from myself <laughs> oh, no. as possible. Oh my God, that's a mood. That's honestly. existential. <laughs> that's, that. It's me every here's, day. Here's so what you, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm gonna impose disadvantage on myself for the next turn because cool. that's what it because the fear is is supposed to be the next fear so i'll say that because i'm trying to get away from myself i'll impose this advantage on myself because i'm kind of running and returning oh. everything so you're afraid and of your you, own power if you see a reflection of yourself somehow you have to run <laughs> away from it i'm running away from arthur <laughs> <laughs> right yeah oh my gosh yeah it's that you must move as far as your speed allows away from you so i will say that i run 60 feet away and then well, but you're still the 30. same distance from yourself. Right. I know, but I don't know that so, until I get until I get there. So you this is deep. You're gonna run. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna use my movement to run. Okay. I'm gonna use my reaction to attack you. With yeah. Uh, uh -oh. I mean I have to, that's what the spell does. Sure, sure, sure. Wait, let me make sure that that does that well, no, force um, movement doesn't provoke attacks of opportunity. So, right, does, so I don't get an attack of opportunity. Yeah. Cool. Well, that was a fun turn. Yeah. Um, Tutoru, it's your turn. I can't leave it. I said that to myself. Okay. Well, Tutoru is going to see Vel what just happened to Velma and kind of slightly panic. <gasps> Velma, are you okay? Wait, just stay still. And I'm going to like kind Don't of try to. Like, Don't let her near me. I'm going to try to like touch, like hold Velma and be like, it's okay. It's okay. And like, if I can get a hold of her, I will do cure wounds. You can get up and in melee with her. Okay, great. So you can cure wounds. All right, I'm gonna grab her hand. Be like, Velma, Velma, it's okay, it's okay. And yeah, cure wounds, I will do that right now. Let's see, 2d8 plus four. Where's the d8? I've never used this before. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, roll. Ooh, it's on the screen. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so five plus four, I heal you for nine. Nice, I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah, it'll do. Yeah, it'll keep me from being it's dead. something. Yeah. I can't so it. you run over to Velma. Um, actually, did I, I didn't, did I attack Tutoru? No, you did not. No. As a, uh, as Tree Shaker? Nope. I don't mm -hmm. think so. No, you attacked you Velma. You were not in melee with me before. Nope. That's fine. So you're yeah. over with Velma now. The two that are up next to the Chimera are Astaroth and Lucian. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. That was Tutoru's turn? Yes. Oh, wait, it is do I, now I Tree Shaker's turn. Owl time, baby! Owl time. All right. Uh, he takes, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, almost max. Uh, 17 radiant damage. Jeepers! Yeah, get them, owls. That's how we do in Ravnica. That's okay. 17's a lot. Good. Um, wow. Uh, Does it not have a save on that? To what? To the... Uh, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think no, it's... Okay. Yeah, if it starts in the turn there. Oh, wait, no, it does. Wait, no, you're right. It's a wisdom oh. saving throw. Sorry. Cool. And it has advantage because it's a magical effect. Yeah, I guess. Uh, 22. That'll do it. So you only take half of that, which is... What level is Spirit Guardians? Uh, third level? Okay, are you within the Spirit Guardian's area? Yeah, it happens around me. Cool, so you'll take 17. Wait, what, why? Because I have spell turning. Oh no, it's an area, Never mind. Yeah. It's a target, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, every, it's everything in the area. Yeah, 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 um, okay, cool, Never mind. So what do I take instead? <laughs> uh, you take half of 17, which rounded down is eight. Cool, so instead of, at that many, so uh, this is 66, I think. Cool. Um, it's going to be the Chimera's turn. The Chimera. Man, if all our casters just wreck themselves this fight. <laughs> <laughs> the Chimera is going to move away by flying up. It has wings. Uh, uh, 
makes them an appear. On it? What? What was that? What? So, sorry, you guys all stopped for a moment. Um, do I get an uh, a attack of opportunity when it flies away? You do. Yes. Me too. I want to punch it. Great. Both of you take attacks of opportunity. Yeah, Astarok take tries to hook it with his axe. He's like, "Hey, no, don't go away." Mm. I was like, "What are the battle axes, Astarok sheep?" Huh? I was I didn't. I was like, "Why do I have a battle axe?" I was still on your sheep. <laughs> oh, it's yeah, it's yeah. So go ahead and make your your attack. Wah, wah. I got a six, so no. <laughs> Even with the blood, yeah, it's not happening. With yeah, blood. you have some rerolls, right? You do. You have two rerolls. I would like to oh. use one. Great. So I would like to use the other one. You divine through your mind that you were gonna miss, and instead you find where the being is gonna be. Uh, uh, or maybe I do. We'll find out. <laughs> find out. Uh, okay, that that's real good. Um, that's a twenty-six. That is a lot. You hit. Uh, okay. Uh, then I will do my one d twelve plus six damage. Which is the 12 again. <laughs> wow. Oh. Uh, so, that's right, so that's 18, 18 more damage. Uh, take that, you big multi headed thing. Wow. Jeepers. And uh, as it takes that, it looks like it's not doing great, but it does gangly sort of fly up about 15 feet. And um, the antelope head and the wolf head come together underneath and they both open their mouth and combining their mystical energy, a breath cone, immersed uh -oh. fire. I need, and it's to the two that are in front of it. I need dexterity saving throws at Lucian and uh, Asteron. Okie dokie. Chimera exhales fire in a 15 foot cone. Got it. Dirty 20. What was that? I got a dirty 20. Cool. I got a 19. All right, both of those saves. So you're going to take half of this many. The wolf head roars. <laughs> <laughs> I like the background dog. So the wolf head sounds like. Half of 32. Oh, OK. Which is 16 fire damage Hey, as it breathes at you. Cool, 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 cool. Um. And yeah, it'll it'll just fly forty feet in the air. That's its turn. Um, Son of a Lucian. Mm, you said forty feet in the air. It is forty feet above you, up in, almost to the canopy of this massive tree. Come on. Uh, I'm trying to see how far Spirit Guardians. That's not going to work because it's fifteen feet. Wanted to get away from us. Um, okay. Uh, what am I? Oh, you know what? I can still cast this. I will cast slow on this. Well, this is a targeted spell, so probably not. Never mind. Hey, maybe if I don't save. Wait, I, I thought the spell turn happens regardless. No, only if I save. Oh. So I have advantage on saving throws against any spells that target the Chimera. Oh. Uh, this is on page 216 of Mythic Goddesses of Theros, by the way, everybody. Okay. Um, and if I save, and the spell is a fourth level, fourth level or lower, the spell has no effect on the Chimera and instead targets the caster. Uh, it's worth it. I'm going to, no, it's probably not. I'm just going to shoot it with my crossbow, I think. Cool. So here we go. Classic Theros, shoot it with your crossbow, Steve. Yeah. Well, that's an eight. And even with bless, I can only get a 12. So that's a yes. miss. That's not going to do it as Damn. the crossbow bolt goes off. Although you sense that there is a, a, a forest being that smiles a little bit at your attempt at being a hunter. <laughs> um, after I also, Lucian- I did drop my spirit guardians after that hit from the breath weapon. I just rolled for- Gotcha, thank you. Uh, it's gonna be the top of the round and it's gonna be Astarok. All right. Uh, I mean, the thing has gotten kind of far away. Is there any way I could see, like, being able to get up to it? You could attempt to climb the tree that's in front of you. W would it? Would that make it far enough? 
Um, I would say that if you spent your action and your dash and successfully scaled the tree, I would let you jump onto the thing. All right, okay. I really want to do that then. Cool. So uh, I'm just gonna be like, all right, I'm bringing this thing down. And I'm just gonna grab onto the tree and I I'll use my ax to sort of help me climb. Although I can't use it to actually cut divots into the tree. Right, you I use just... it as like a, a climbing ax. Right, but as as Ashlyn made very clear in making the thing, it cannot cut, it cannot harm plants. It Correct. cannot. <laughs> no. Cannot harm plants. But I'll just use my whole action. I'll use my whole turn to try and climb up to the top. Sure. Make an athletics check for me. Okay. Also, point of order, don't you still have like a different javelin now? I have just like a regular javelin, I think. I thought oh, you got like a silvered one or something. I can't lost remember. lost it. I don't know if we got it back. I had, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I'll figure it out. I don't have all my uh, my cool item cards with me. Sure. Because I'm on the East Coast right now. But uh, okay. all right. Athletics. Athletics. That, is a 17. Okay. I will say that you get up to its level. You now will have to make a leap to get to it. Um, now I need a dexterity check. No, I would say um, this will be acrobatics instead of athletics. Okay. Can I, can I just, I'll, I'll expend my action surge so that I can like be doing all this crazy stuff, sure. right? Yeah. I think this makes sense. Makes sense to me. I'll let you it. use your athletics check uh, for that. Um, okay. To make the leap. All right. New athletics. Uh, that is a 15. Okay. 15 will let you grasp it by its tail. Okay. Wow. You're not on its back. You have grabbed its tail. <laughs> okay. So Astarok is like holding onto this thing's tail. Can I potentially take an attack at it now, or do I need to spend the rest of my time to like pull myself up? I'll let you take one ax swing mm -hmm. if you then make an athletics check to hold on. All right, I love that. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm just on its tail and Astrog is like, come on, you big thing. Gah! And he's gonna try and uh, take the athletic, he'll, you know, maybe getting a nice ax like hunked into it will make it easier to climb up, right? Sure. Also, uh, Ashlyn, I love this cameo. Yes. <laughs> Excellent animal companion. All right, here's my attack. That is a natural 20, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, baby, oh that's what we needed! Oh, which yes. is a 29, because 29 I get plus nine is gonna on hit. attacks. <laughs> what? 29 is going to hit. Oh, boy. OK, so I will roll my uh, 2d12 plus 6. <laughs> That's nine, that's uh, four. So that is, um, yeah, that's 13 plus six, which is 19. All right, guess what? What? This thing has 95 hit points. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. It took 84 before, which means you have defeated the Tree Shaker Chimera. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me how you fell this massive beast. Okay, so Astarok is holding onto this thing's tail and suddenly he realizes like, oh my God, I ended up flying after all. No, no, get down, get down. And he just goes whack. Yep. And he hacks one of the wings off of it. And the thing Ooh. tumbles to the ground. Well, he doesn't hack it off, but he, he hacks at one of the wings. I, I heard that it tumbles to the ground, is what I heard. I, ah! think, I, I, I think that's what I said, yes. Yeah. Oh, so, no. So, yeah, it's not just flavor. I want to know how this thing died. So, um, yeah, it, uh, it takes that hit, and it begins to twirl and fall. Oh, uh, no. I regret this immediately. Go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw for me. I think that is entirely fair. That is a 17. Uh, 17. So I will half the fall damage. And you fell 40 feet. Okay. Which is 4d6. So uh, 14 halved to 7. All right, I take seven damage. Totally worth it to get that thing out of the air. 
Yes. And as Agreed. it tumbles and falls to the ground, uh, it lies motionless, but immediately begins to <laughs> be overtaken by vines and roots. And grasses grow from it at an unnatural, what feels like an unnatural speed, but it feels like a very natural process. Moss and uh, flowers bloom from it. Um, it immediately decomposes itself into the ground and in its place, clover and forget-me-nots and other, you know, pitcher plants and lots of various flora grow where it once lay. It's beautiful. Wow, that was really cool looking, guys. Nice. Good good job. Is she you. gone? Is she gone? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Who, Are you, who's you gonna gone? be fine? I, I think so. I think I think I'm okay now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry everyone. That was that was weird. Hey, V, it's okay. We've all had weird internal crises in the middle of battle before. <laughs> I attacked Tutru once, remember? I, that was all pretty us. uncool. <laughs> I remember. We yeah, all remember. Sorry. It was very terrifying. You all have proven yourself to the god of the hunt. I stand as witness, as is my purpose. Well, um, I, you can take it from here, right? Wait, was, was that the thing? Where? Yeah, that was the thing. That was the test. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah, that was it. That was the, you just had to, you know, prove yourself in martial combat. Sure. Oh, oh this, okay. This is like a Golgari kind of thing, I guess. I don't know what that is. <laughs> it's right. fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So that's a, that's a, that's a big tree over there. <gasps> um, you know, I think that that's what you need. That's going to take us back to Ravnica? I don't know how it works with y'all. Yeah, so far neither do we. <laughs> well, we have some recollection of how this works. We have a spell to cast. Yes. Together. Do not have the papers for. Well, I have <clears> them here. I posted the link in our chat. Oh, perfect. Uh, and I can also probably just share the spell with everybody, right? Uh, yeah. So I will paste the link to the spell in the chat there. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. So you guys can go ahead and try and cast this spell if you want. Okay, are we, are we ready? So go back to Ravnica part two. Try that again. Hey, return to Ravnica. That, that can't be bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do we need to do again? So the spell uh, packed plant shift. Yes. Takes four rounds. <clears throat> and... Uh, it creates a magical link between a large or larger plant connected to the world ash Yggdrasil, which this tree is, and another plant that is connected to Yggdrasil on a different plane of existence. What is the other tree that you are connected to? The Nyx Bloom. No, no, no. This is the, the one you're trying to get to. Oh, um, it's going to be the tree in the Selesnian Conclave. Um, by my house. Big right. Bertha. <laughs> cool. what, what was <laughs> that called? Your Vernadi's tree. Yes. That, that's the one. The Vernadi cool. tree. Um, creatures imbued with the magic of the world pact who are in contact with each other within range open a portal in the plant, different plane of existence for the duration, which is four rounds. Any creature can step to the target plant and exit from the destination plant by using five feet of movement. To choose a destination point, you must have seen or touched the destination plant at least once, and then make an intelligence nature check equal to 24 minus your character level. You, you guys are level seven? Yes. So yeah. the DC for this is gonna be 17. And because this is a group check, it's gonna be an average of the four of your nature checks. DC of 17. Oh boy. Cool. All right, before so, we start this. Is, is that blessing still active for us? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm... You can do preparations if you want before doing the check. Well, I have bardic inspiration still, so I'm going to be well, using that on this you, one. Do not, because it lasts I 10 don't. minutes. But <laughs> I'm going to give it to all of you now, yes. because it, yes. okay. everyone do, has a D8. Does guidance stack with that or no? 
I believe it does. I think it should, right? All right. Well, then we're going to boop, boop, boop. She boops everyone's heads. <laughs> You're not, we will be guided to I the feel Vinati. Pretty guided, Vinati. Yeah. Okay. So the between the four of you, you're trying to get to sixty-eight. Oh, easy. Boy. By the way, I can't cast product inspiration on myself, so only you three got it. So I'll definitely take that guidance. What does yes. guidance do? Guidance is going to give you, I believe it's a D four, but let's double check. Yes, you can roll a D four. Okay. And add it. Okie dokie. And what does Bardic do again? Is it a D eight? You get to add a D eight to one roll, uh, basically any ability check, attack roll, or saving throw in the next ten minutes. You get to roll <clears throat> it once. Okay. We got right. this, everybody. Here we go. Right. Don't, if you don't meet the check, you still go, you're still able to go through the tree. Right. It just takes you somewhere else. We don't know where. Great. Yeah. So far, so so far it's worked for us, right? I mean, and, no. <laughs> and the original <laughs> role is a nature check? It is a, yes, it is a nature check. Great. I can do that. Oh, um, man. All right, so that's so close. 21 plus, no, 22. I got a 16 after everything. Okay. I got a 12. Uh, oh, nope, don't roll that. Where is my D8? There we go. And you I got have a, a re-roll. Nine. You still have one re-roll. I vote. Or sorry, validated. no, you have two re-rolls. Oh. Okay. That's for the party or for individuals? That's for the table. Okay. I, I got a I'm 26. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, too true. Okay, okay. Velma gets when one. When you have your final numbers, let me know. Okay. Let 26. me take one more reroll because mine was kind of low, too. Oh, man. I Yeah, go ahead. But I rolled a nine either way, so. Because <laughs> uh, um, we don't get to re add guidance on a reroll, right? That's pretty much just yeah, a one can. time. Oh, yeah, oh, you reroll okay. everything. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So then I will reroll my guidance. Okay. So I got a 15. Okay. I got a, I got a 12 total. Okay. Was two trues enough to take us over? <laughs> I don't know. This is 15 plus 12 plus 26. 26 feels pretty good, honestly. Did Lucian roll yet? Yeah, Lucian. I got a 16. Okay. That total that you needed to get to was 68. Uh... Your total was nice. Yeah, 69, we did it! Yeah. Oh, did oh, I was like, what does that mean? <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Man, we beat it by uh, one. Oh. <laughs> and in the tree, you see cracking open b- the bark and it crackles. And you see on the other side, a stone bench that looks like something you've seen a long time ago. You see a path that leads to the front of your Vernadi. Oh my gosh, I see you it, see, I see home. You see Ravnica. If we finally made it back, walk through and find Let's out. Let's go. I'm not gonna wait. <sighs> Only one way to know. Let's go. And as you all walk through the tree, back into Ravnica. That's where we're gonna call the episode. All right. Okay, all right. Nice. Did it. Nicely done. Did it. Who <laughs> survived? Tune in next time for Return to Ravnica, exploring <laughs> Dragon's Maze. That was pretty cool. <laughs> pretty, yeah. That was nice that you needed to get to. Right. You just barely got it. Just Ooh. barely. That's perfect, though. That, that's yeah. what you want. You don't want to, like... No, you don't want to blow it out of the water. Nah, yeah. you want it to be, like, just on the edge. Well, that was awesome, y'all. That was yeah. fun. Good job. Um, thank you all for tuning in, uh, y'all at home. Um, uh, we hope that you had a fun time watching our Theros adventure here on The Broken Pact. Um, we will return this party someday in some form. Um, probably, probably we'll do a Theros something in addition okay. to what we just did. Nice. Uh, and we'll, we'll see the broken pack back in Ravnica when, when that's possible. Uh, so stay tuned to our social media platforms for, uh, announcements related to the broken pact. You can use the hashtag the broken pact RPG to, uh, 
tell us how much you love us or to keep track of um, any announcements having to do with the show. Uh, Gen Con at Home is still going on all weekend. There's a ton of stuff here on Saving Crow Show all weekend. I'm on a panel tomorrow morning uh, with several of the GMs of the channel discussing uh, GMing. Um, and yeah, uh, let's, let's, uh, let's go around and let everybody know where they can follow you. All right, everybody. My name is Jordan Pridgen. You can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pidgeon. I am also on uh, the Friday night show on Saving Throw Wild Cards, which is on Fridays at 8 p.m. Pacific time. Although we are we are just finishing up with Wild Cards Interludes, which was a, a, a fun little side diversion. But you can tune in this next week on Friday to find out what our next campaign is going to be and have a little like campfire chat back, which would be really fun. So that's nice, me. Hey guys, you can find me. Uh, I'm Riley Silverman. You can find me on uh, Twitter at Riley J Silverman, or you can find me on Instagram at Riley Silverman. And you can find my writing at Nerdist.com and Sci-Fi Wire. And you can also uh, find me in the actual play Doctor Who podcast, The Game of Rassilon. We're in our second season, and we just added a new cast member to the show. Uh, so we're very excited to have a, a brand new companion for my Doctor. Uh, so uh, check that out. Hey everybody, I'm Grav Galati, and you can follow me on all the socials at double GXG. It's the word double, then GXG. Uh, and uh, JP mentioned Wild Cards, which I'm also on Friday nights here at Saving Throw at 8 p.m. Um, and that's it for me. All right. Hey, everyone. I am Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Twitter at Ashlyn Rose. You can find me on Instagram as RAR. It's Ashlyn. And uh, I, you can check Twitch sometimes. Uh, twitch.tv slash ashlyn underscore rose but aside from that i will also be on here next weekend during a very special cool. marathon we'll be having um for alzheimer's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah yeah the longest day yes right here on the channel for good good things yes yeah, so follow uh saving throw show on twitter for all of that information i've been your omen speaker uh this afternoon mox ruby m-o-x-r-e-u-b-y on all of the social media platforms um, you can join me on Wednesday nights on the Magic Mike's podcast. That's M-I-C-S. That's a pun for the week that was in Magic the Gathering news. Um, and of course, you can join tomorrow here on Saving Throw Show for that GM roundtable. Please do turn in your Gen Con tickets at the link provided uh, in the chat there if you uh, would be so kind. Um, and yeah, it's been great getting back to actually gaming with you all. This has been yeah. uh, wonderful i'm so glad you all showed up to tune in and we'll see you next time on the broken pact have a good evening everybody bye bye